Treatment can cause changes in your blood count, which is why it's important you have regular blood tests as arranged by your treating team. Red blood cells carry oxygen around your body. You might feel tired, cold, or short of breath when these levels are low. White blood cells help fight infection. These include neutrophils, which can become low during treatment and means that your body can't fight infection as well as usual. Platelets help to form clots to control bleeding and bruising. During treatment, these also become lower than usual, so extra care must be taken to prevent bleeding. You may at some point require a red blood cell or a platelet transfusion to top up your blood count levels, but your treating team will let you know if and when this is required. During and after treatment, there are extra things you will need to do to take care of yourself. Check your temperature as often as advised by your treating team and anytime you're feeling unwell. Seek medical advice immediately if it's over 38 degrees Celsius. Take anti-nausea medication as prescribed as it can help prevent the onset of nausea before you experience it. Shower daily with a mild soap to prevent bacteria on the skin and use a gentle moisturiser to prevent dryness or cracks. Brush your teeth with a soft toothbrush twice a day and use gentle saltwater mouthwash, notifying your treating team if any white areas develop. These are known as mouth sores. As your platelets may be low, extra care should be taken to avoid bleeding. Use an electric razor for shaving, be gentle when blowing your nose, and avoid contact sports. If you have a central line, also known as a pick or Hickman line, examine the skin daily to check for redness, swelling, or tenderness around the site. Keep the dressing dry at all times, and if it becomes wet or peeling away, call your treating ward to arrange a dressing change. Also check that the caps remain on each lumen. If you're attending hospital for treatment, bring a book or something to keep you entertained. If you have a central line, wear a button-up shirt so the nurse can access it easily. There are extra things you can do to stay healthy and safe when out and about. Try to keep active with 30 to 60 minutes of light exercise per day, such as walking. You'll be more tired than usual, so do also make time to get enough rest. Notify your doctor if you're having trouble sleeping or unable to get out of bed. Some medication can make your skin extra sensitive to the sun, so avoid direct sunlight and wear sunscreen and a hat when outdoors. Maintain safe social distancing or wear a surgical mask when avoiding crowds is not possible. Also be considerate of what you're breathing in. Avoid tobacco smoke and dusty construction sites as these can increase your exposure to respiratory infections. Practicing good hand hygiene can dramatically reduce germs. Wash your hands or use hand sanitizer after using the toilet, before and after meal preparation, eating or taking medication, after sneezing, coughing or nose blowing, and after touching objects, pets or other people. As you will be more susceptible to infection, some activities should be avoided. Stay away from others while they're unwell. Don't let pets lick your face or scratch you. Keep them clean and have someone else clean up their droppings. And avoid gardening as there is a lot of bacteria in soil. Finally, talk to your specialist about what vaccines you need, such as the flu vaccine, which can provide you with extra protection. Although you may experience a decreased appetite and changes to your taste and smell, it's important to choose foods that will help in regaining strength. You also need to stay hydrated with at least two litres of caffeine-free fluids per day, unless your doctor has restricted your fluid intake. Small meals regularly or eating plain foods is better than having nothing at all. During treatment and while your immune system is compromised, additional food safety measures should be taken to reduce your risk of infection. A low bacteria diet should be followed by avoiding the following. Raw or undercooked meat, poultry, seafood or eggs, including runny yolks. Sandwich, cured or highly processed meats, including those from the deli unpasteurized dairy products, soft cheeses and anything with mould in it, and food past its best before date. It's essential to avoid contamination by safely preparing foods. Be sure to wash your hands, surfaces and equipment thoroughly, especially after preparing raw meat.
wash and peel raw fruit and vegetables as bacteria can live on the skin. Thaw frozen foods in the fridge overnight rather than at room temperature or the microwave and then cook until steaming hot. Don't defrost and refreeze food more than once. Cook meat until it's well done. Only eat food that has been freshly cooked and served immediately and use leftovers within one to two days. Cancer treatment can cause changes to your physical appearance, fatigue and hormonal changes, which may all affect your sexual drive. Touch, cuddling and gentle massage are ways to connect and maintain the intimacy without having intercourse. Treatment can also affect your fertility, sexual function or a developing baby, which it's important to discuss with your doctor before treatment commences. After treatment, it's important not to assume that you're infertile without your doctor arranging for this to be medically verified. It's safe to resume intercourse once your white cells are above one and your platelet counts above 50. However, condoms are recommended during treatment to protect you from sexually transmitted infections, pregnancy while there's risk to a developing baby, and to protect your partner from exposure to bodily fluids that are potentially cytotoxic. Some women may experience vaginal dryness, for which lubricants such as KY jelly can be used, while men may experience erectile dysfunction. Notify your treating team if these symptoms are ongoing. There are some symptoms that you should seek help urgently for by attending the emergency department immediately. These include a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or higher, chills, sweats, shivers or shakes, breathing difficulties, uncontrolled diarrhea, if you're unable to keep any food or drink down, or pain that you can't get under control with your prescribed medication. Some further symptoms should be reported to your treating team as soon as possible. These include a headache or stiff neck, a sore throat, cough or cold, mouth sores, rash or redness of the skin, swelling, redness or tenderness, especially around a wound, catheter or rectal area, and pain or blood when passing urine. Your health service may advise you to contact your nurse coordinator, treating ward or doctor for guidance on managing these symptoms.